Hey everybody, it's Ron Grant, and you're watching Just For The Record. Stay tuned, you're watching 284 Media. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is Freedom. CCT Freedom. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast unlimited LTE data and unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico, and the UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages. Julian Fraser, RA. Welcome to Just For The Record. Thank you. A husband, father, fighter for the third district. You're a registered architect, long, long standing politician. And by long standing, I mean you've served for 20 years in the House of Assembly. One young lady in your district, when I called and asked her to tell me about you, she said, a vote well placed. He is definitely the man for Seacog's way. <laughs> she went on to add that even when you are passed on, she will still be looking for your name <laughs> on the ballot. And any opponent has to be sent by you, and you yourself have to tell the people, or tell her rather, to vote for this individual. No, those are very kind words. But you also have the persons who say he's rude, unapproachable, arrogant, doesn't seem to listen, doesn't know how to apologize. We still have water issues every day in Seacoast Bay. He doesn't relate well to the younger generation. He only supports his supporters and no one else. Just for the record, Mr. Fraser, how do you respond to such comments from some members of your electorate? Well, I'll take the first one first. <laughs> <laughs> that was very kind. That was very kind. I think, I think it reflects better on, me, on myself, and I can identify with that. The second one, I, uh, I heard people say all those things. The only question I have for that, those people is, have you ever met the guy? Hmm. If you ever met the guy, you would find a very different Julian Fraser from the one you saw from across the street or from the one your friends or someone else told you about. The issue of water, the problem of water problems. Uh, you know, it's the government of the Virgin Islands who fail to distribute the water from its production point and the storage point. The water is stored at Sabbath Hill, and the government failed to distribute the water from Sabbath Hill to the reservoir in Hannah Hill. And that caused a problem for the water in Seacouse Bay. I think over the last few days, there has been improvements. You have situations where the pump breaks. And for two weeks, no one says anything. Hmm. You can't blame that on the, the representative for the district. I'm the guy who, in my very first term, installed a water plant in Seacouse Bay. Seacouse Bay had water 24-7. It can happen again. The, the water is there. It just has to be distributed to the people. As far as apologizing, if I know that I've done something that aggrieves someone, I'm indeed sorry for it. But you have, to, you have to have a reason for apologizing. If you're going to apologize, it's not just for the sake of apologizing. You must know what you're apologizing for. Okay. If someone tell me that I did something that aggrieved them and it was not intentional, I'll certainly apologize for it. So when you, you said you take the, you know, the first one, husband, father, and again, these are misconceptions. You know, people, the, the, the latter, the first one is rather pleasant. You know, I, 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 it wasn't about me and I was blushing. I was like, oh, you know, when she said this and she was earnest when I called her and, and, and told well, me. I, plain I, told you, I told you that, that one better reflects the Julian Fraser okay. that the people So know. you would say that is Julian Fraser? That is Julian Fraser. The husband, father, fighter for the third. Fighter for the territory. Okay. <laughs> Not just the third, but okay. that person is from the third. So they talk about what they really know from the heart. As one of the most seasoned politicians, how will you work to bridge the gap between the younger generation and persons of your age group? Because you have some members of my age, the millennials, who say, Ron, I ain't even going to vote. I ain't bothering with that. They don't listen to us. How do you plan on bridging the gap? We have to first acknowledge that there is a, 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 a communication, a, a miscommunication. We have, to, we have to first acknowledge that, that there's miscommunication between my generation and the younger generation. And we have to also 
acknowledge that there's a gap, a generational gap. And that miscommunication between us is not necessarily intentional. It's, it's more mostly benign. People like myself who have, who have been in, in public eye for so long, we tend to focus almost exclusively on international matters that impacts the territory significantly, if not addressed. Things like globalization, the UK-EU relations, mm -hmm. Brexit, and our financial services, which is under constant attack. So we, we tend to focus on those issues and at the same time overlook the very important young electorate. What, I, what my group has done is we have ensured that among our candidacy, we have people from the younger generation who can relate directly to these people, the younger generation, and speak their language. Okay. There, is, there is a vocabulary that the young people has developed. It deals in signs and signals. Mm -hmm. It's more electronic, digital. And the older generation is more into what I told you about earlier. And I think in the Ministry of um, Education and Culture, there should be a junior minister who's responsible for youth affairs. Okay. And that minister at that age group, like in my, my group, a minister from that age group that I spoke about, the younger generation, will be able to relate to the needs of the younger generation and make sure that it's on the table because that person will be sitting at the table. When matters are being discussed, you don't have that younger generation at the table. I think also what can be helpful is in the future when the premier travels and even his ministers, he just take a younger person from, from the population, whether it's selected at random or it's a recommendation that this person go with him mm -hmm. to various meetings abroad. Wants to shadow him? Well, it, it, it might turn out that the, the individual would have an interest after seeing what's going on in the, the international circles. Because believe me, when you travel, even if you're an adult and you see these things, it's an awakening. And much less, much less a younger person from the younger generation. And one of the advice I'll give the young people is that they ought to take risk. Never be afraid of taking risk. Because if you are exposed to how money is made mm -hmm. and that it's all possible that you can do the same thing, and it's that assurance comes from an adult, an older person. Because when they give you that assurance, they're also giving you some form of guarantee with it. I will back you. I will always be there for you. And that's one of the greatest pieces of advice that I can give a younger person. You are caught up with all the things that we have been through. Mm -hmm. You're trying to own land. You're trying to raise a, start a family. You're trying to start a home. All these things that you are caught up with. If you can only get the opportunity to sit with us you would understand that there might be a fast track to life as opposed to going through it the long and the hard way, which is the way I had to do it because no one told me what I'm telling you now. Right, right. That's some great advice and I thank you for that as a, a young man myself, I appreciate that. Apart from being an elected official, what qualifications do you have educationally or otherwise that can assist in the leading of our territory? Well, you, as you started out, you referred to me as Julian Fraser RA, and the RA stands for Registered Architect. I, am, I was educated in uh, New York, uh, bachelor's, two bachelor's degree, and in architecture. I'm registered to practice architecture in the state of New York and in the United States Virgin Islands. I spent the first 20 years of my life as a professional practicing architecture in the city of New York. I specialize in, in skyscrapers. And planning, architecture has everything to do with planning, physical planning. And given what we are just coming off from, the devastation of Hurricane Irma, I think a person of my background is uniquely qualified to lead this territory through the next several years that we're gonna be rebuilding. And I think that that's what I am offering the territory. 
an opportunity to use my skills and background sitting from a vantage point that can benefit the territory in, in a way that um, it can't happen in, from any other post position. What exactly led to your departure from the Virgin Islands party? I think it, get, it got to the point where we, I personally realized that the, the party's direction and my direction were two different, we were diametri diametri uh, diametrically opposed in, in, in each other. And I think that we, we have served each, each other interest well by parting companies. Mm. I think that they are able to move on and I'm able to move on as well. <clears throat> you know, the, the Bible in, in, in Second Corinthians speaks of unequally yoked mm -hmm. and what to do when that happens. And I think that that's what, that's what took place with us. I was fortunate enough to associate myself with some people who saw in me my leadership qualities and associated themselves with me for the purposes of bettering this country. And we were able to form the group called Progressives United. And in that, we are coming out with our own uh, political group with our slate of candidates for the 2019 general elections. And uh, that's where we stand at this particular point. If your group, the Progressives United, <clears throat> were to come up short in the next general elections, are you willing to form a coalition? And does that coalition mean that you must be premier? Well, I'll first answer that question by saying we expect <laughs> to be <Okay>. successful. <laughs> However, if your question, if, if it turns out the way you ask the question, at, the point, at that point, things unfold. Things unfold that you can't you can't predict into the future. I've been around situations on two occasions where um, the ruling party, the party that ended up ruling that after that general election, had to form a coalition. I've, had, I've seen that happen on two occasions, and it's nothing new for the territory or new for myself okay. to become a part of a coalition. And like, like I said, I'm not going to tell you exactly how this is going to play out mm -hmm. because it's the future and no one can predict it. But I'm, I'm amenable to doing whatever is in the best interest of the people of the territory. You now, with your departure and the formation of your new group, Progressives United, some could say that sends a message of to the young people particularly, that you know something's not working, you move on or you, you part ways for the better interest of both. And some could also say that it sends a negative me message because we're always talking about and, uh, and preaching that one should work together and forgive and forget and you know come to the betterment of the people. Now in this case, that was not the case. You separated and you thought it best to uh, be apart from each other. What message exactly do you think your departure from the VIP sends to the young people? I think it's a message in life. It's a message that is, is seen every day in everyday life. Marriages terminate in divorce. And those marriages that continue under false pretenses are the greatest devastation to the two individuals who are involved and the people associated with them. People move on in life. And this is another scenario where people move on in life. Okay. Why should the people of the third district re-elect you and put in, in their trust the team or the group Progressives United? The people of the third district has had a, a, a long, and I would, I, would, I would say to you, a long and prosperous relationship with me over the last 20 years. And me telling them why they should vote for me, I don't think it's a matter of doing that. I think it's a matter of me putting my programs on the table and them comparing them with whomever else has programs to come along. I can tell you that this is the same guy who, in his first term, subdivided 114 um, acres of land and distributed 83 um, home owners' lots to new homeowners and five commercial lots. I came back again a second term and, and had also distributed another 43 of those 
lots on the same estate. I mean, I, sub, I subdivided the property, surfaced the roads with concrete. And this is the same guy who ended up paving all the roads in Pockwood Pond, Palestina, Hannah's, Duff Bottom. And it's, it's on and on. I told you before that I installed a water plant in Sikaut Bay. It was not for selfish means or selfish reasons. It's just that I was living there and I saw the frustration of, of the people. I even myself was frustrated and I ended up doing that. I am the guy who, in 1999, when I got elected, started the Seacoast Harbor Development Project. It's a project that I envisage that Rotong has reached its viable limits and it has to expand. And the only way I see it expanding is westward. And Seacoast is the first option that I see. When I moved the Department of Motor Vehicles to Parkwood Pond, it was that vision in mind that things would start moving linearly to the west. Okay. And I think that the people of Seacoast recognize that and then there's the issue of representation. People must know that there was a time when I was a child, we didn't have district representatives. Mm. And the opportunities went to their, the, you know, they were really going elsewhere. Someone in their clever thought came up with the idea of having district representatives. So now all nine districts sits at the same table. And if there is something happening, Mm -hmm. We all get it. And I think that I do my job as a representative. I, I am the best at what I do, represent my people. And that representation that I'm talking about, that I represent my people in the third district, every chance I get, I do it for the entire territory. And that's the opportunity that I'm asking for. And I expect that the people in the third district recognize that I am a person I have phone numbers and everybody has them. You call me, I come. I don't ask you to come to me, I come to you. And despite what some people may say about me that's negative, I think if they get the opportunity to meet with me and that opportunity is always open to them to come and have a chat. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with Just For The Record, the Honorable Julian Fraser, RA. <laughs> Hello? Wait, you had a long time. Yeah. You said you were sick? What happened to our wedding rehearsal? Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pear Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest. Take two Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, i see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be. The coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other with welcoming, professional service and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Sir, given the current state of the economy and the ever-increasing overseas laws that essentially seem to be putting a stronghold on the BVI's financial services, what are your proposed plans to see the BVI into a future with one of its main economic pillars seemingly under decline or attack? One of the first things that we in this territory must do is come to grips with the realities. The realities are that financial services is what it is. It's, 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 it's an entity, uh, a sector that has been going on for quite some time. It's been in Panama and it moved to the Virgin Islands and the money movers of the world, the shakers, they decide exactly where is the best location for them to operate from. The BVI happens to be that place of choice, it had been so far the last uh, two, two, two decades. Yeah. And at some point, that, that edge that we have will wear off and it's beginning to wear off. We need to come to grips with that reality. The international community is bringing pressure on us. We continue to upgrade our, our laws. As a legislator, I know very, very well how, how much priority we set towards the financial services. We get bills for free readings in one sitting, which is 
highly discouraged. And um, but but because of the industry we're in, I mean, we, we got a bill coming up tomorrow uh, Thursday, which is slated for three readings in the same setting. And it's all about financial services. I'm being told that if we don't reach a certain threshold mm -hmm. with the EU, we c it's possible that we can be blacklisted. Mm -hmm. Now, these these are chilling, chilling um, words to listen to. When you have an industry that brings into your treasury more than two thirds of your revenue, if that evaporates, what happens? I can't allow that to happen. I can't afford to allow it to happen. As leader of this country, come into grips with the reality that the EU is after you. The UK has been shielding us while in the EU. When the EU, when the UK leaves the EU, who's going to shield us from the EU? I, I strongly recommend, I'm suggesting that we have an entrustment from the British government to deal with our own financial services internationally. So we can talk directly with any country on, a, on matters of financial services. It was okay to deal with the United with the European Union when the UK was a member. Because if, if the UK is sitting in that same room and something shows up from the BVI, the, e, the UK can veto, suggest, soften the blow, mm -hmm. or whatever the case might be, on us, and look for our best interests as well. Yeah. Because I'm sure that they will be, um, they would have a heads up as to what's coming. Provide some support. Once they're no longer there, I am not in support of this entrustment for the EU. I think that we should deal with the EU through the UK when Brexit takes place. Now, there are those who might disagree. They're saying that we are giving up a form of independence, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but independence must come in the face of reality. And this reality is of such that when you're out, these people are out to get us. There's no two ways about it. They're out to get us. And when you become outclassed or outmatched, you have to reshape your thought. And I think that that's what we ought to do. And th th there is no stopping. They're going to keep coming. We just have to be ahead of the, the, the curve in order to deal with this situation. Do you suspect, and with these ever-evolving laws that put pressure on us, do you suspect that the BVA will have to somehow come to grips with the fact that we would have to, uh, you know, kind of call it quits with our relationship with the UK and perhaps move to independence? Uh, it would be nice if we reach that point. Okay. But we have to educate and educate and educate. I would presume that a young man like yourself, or people of your generation, who should have been at that point in your thoughts mm -hmm. as to, you know, moving on, yeah. are not there. And it's not your fault. And that's part, of, that's part of that generation gap that I talk about, that, that you ask, how do you bridge the gap? That gap, that's, that's a part of that whole gap that needs to be bridged. What do we teach you? I grew up as a child waving the Union Jack. Mm. You grew up as a child waving the Union Jack, and your child is still waving the Union Jack. But when I grew up as a child, we talk about walking the streets barefooted. We use um, lantern with kerosene mm -hmm. for light. What are you using today? You're wearing <laughs> Air Jordans for $190, and you are, uh, are using electricity. You got iPhone 10 and all those things. So why is it that the same flag I waved, you're still waving it? Or your children are still waving it? Is, it? is it that we haven't done our homework and yeah. teaching you how to some point step off? Yeah, definitely. I, I, at my age, cringe at the idea that one day soon, no, or later, or sooner, is going to leave the stage and it's not set. That's why I try to tell the younger generation that comes into the House of Assembly, listen, this is your day. You do what you have to do. But the problem is that when you get elected as a new person, you try to try to work towards getting mm. reelected and you can't focus on those things that are... It focuses in the wrong place. <laughs> For you, it's in the wrong place. For yeah. them, getting reelected is everything. And, and by the time they get to, to, to the point where they can speak up and do what, what is necessary, they're where I'm at, right? Yeah. So it's a cycle. It needs to be broken. I understand.
Let's play a game. I don't know if my interviewees like this game, but I sure do. Some impromptu questions, sir. You're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Huh? Just a couple of them. Secret talent. <laughs> do you have a secret talent? I, I, my talent is, is, is wide open. I don't have a secret talent. It's wide open. I'm, I'm an architect and that's what I do. I, I am a creator. I, I see things into the future that others don't. And that, that's what, probably that's one of my downfall hmm. because I, I see the future. If you, if, I, if you can close your eyes long enough, when you open them, you would see a whole different world okay. before you because we create things. All the physical aspects in life, we create. And my, my mind is racing miles ahead of, of others. And that's why the people might think that I'm withdrawn, I'm mm -hmm. distant and all that stuff. Okay. That's it. Guilty pleasure. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm an avid, avid race car fan. Nice. Yeah, I can sit there and watch a car go wrong a circle 500 times and not get That's a one a one mile circle 500 times just <laughs> sit there and watch it and and i'm studying strategies and i'm watching how these guys do what they do mm -hmm. and uh, i don't know how many uh, too many people here in the Virgin Islands can do that right. that's what i do best piece of advice you've ever gotten oh what this guy said to me one day um one one day I was I was at Rotary and one of the, the members Your Arterium? used to be. Okay. One of the members said to me, <clears throat> he called me aside, he said, uh, listen to me. You see those guys? You don't know them. When you hear them start a conversation, stay out of it. And I later came to find out the the, the, the association of members. One guy could be an automobile mechanic and another one is heading a trust company. And then the next thing you learn about them is that they own a piece of property someplace. Okay. And it's, it's strange, kind of like strange bedfellows. Yeah. And you, I, I'm sitting there, I, I had just come back from New York and I don't know the people really. I thought I knew them because growing up as a child, I, I knew you, I knew him, I knew the other one, but the things they got into since I left, mm. I, had no, I hadn't had a clue. So there I am sitting, getting involved in these conversations, tearing down, your partner right in front of you and i didn't know that so what i learned is that you know get to know people before you start making comments if you could tell your younger self uh 25 if you could tell yourself at that age something what would it be i would tell myself take risk take risk what's take the risk. biggest risk you've ever taken <laughs> I believe the biggest risk I've taken was to um, come back to Tortola to live. And is it one you regret? No, not at all. Okay. I, I, I just decided that I had reached that part of my mm -hmm. professional career and uh, reached the limit and I was coming back home. I thought, um, and I also said to myself when I left is I'll never work for another man again in my life. Okay. <laughs> I was able to do that, and um, but it was it was a risk because I had to bring my whole family and everything mm -hmm. back to Tortola. At your age, no. Is there anything that you would do differently? Looking back, any regrets? No, I would spend that part of my life. What I spent in New York, I'll spend it right there again. I can't think of another place in the world I live at that time in my life. I'll do it again. The only thing I I, I would love to have had <laughs> at that time is money. <laughs> <laughs> But who has money at that age? Right. Nobody. Okay. And when you get money, you don't have the time. So. Well, Honorable Julian Fraser, just for the record, thank you very much. Good man. Thank you. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbbi.com. Advertising with us works.